Arfield. What a volley! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's a Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fantella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3-0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And he's won the outside, comes inside, comes on the shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class, Burnley have done it, fantastic, Clarence deserved the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to TurfCast and welcome along to another episode of the TurfCast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redmondhead, with this weekend's game at Ellen Road against Leeds United, one that promises to be a cracker, obviously, if you're not travelling over the Pennines or under the Pennines, however you, however you get there, um, then it is of course on Sky, 12.30 kickoff on Saturday afternoon and as always on the pre-game show, I am joined by a fan of the opposition, and of course, it's a Leeds fan, so please not hold that against him. But it is Tom, and he's from I'd Rather Be Leeds. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you, mate. Obviously, the last time I'd have seen you, would have probably been in a Radio Yorkshire studio <laughs> about what, quite a while eight, back, wasn't it? Yeah. Eight years ago. Yeah. How have you been? Yeah, really good, mate. Yeah, there's been plenty of ups and downs in between then, I think, for. Uh... Both Leeds and Burnley, so it'll be interesting to see where we're both at on Saturday, won't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Plenty of ups and downs as well in the seasons as well. So let's talk about your yeah. season so far then, please, mate, because outside looking in, uh, it seems like you started pretty slowly, but then you have picked up. So how 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 do Leeds fans feel like your season has gone then? I think so far, the start of the season was very reminiscent of where we were in the transfer window at that time. I think if you look back to the season previous to that, it was very similar as well. Um, we were in a very much a transition period, um, losing Archie Gray, losing Somerville, and then losing Rutter quite late on as well. It was kind of like, here we go again, that sort of feeling, I think, for most of the fan base. And obviously, we didn't see sort of their replacements until right until the, until the death sort of in the window. But I think based on the last game against Hull, the players that we have brought in, so Solomon... Uh, Ramazani's came in, uh, Tanaka. Those players have kind of lifted the um, fan morale a bit. I think all three, when they were featured against Hull, looked like they could bring quality to the side, which is obviously important because we lost sort of integ- integral members of the team. Um, and yeah. I think if you look at both both clubs, we've, we've kind of gone through a similar pattern in the transfer window. We, we kind of started with a very, very strong squad. Then we sort of hit a mid-patch of um, sort of key players departing for sort of obvious reasons. And then both clubs have had to sort of transition into how do we replace those key players with enough quality. So it's been a very kind of dramatic for both clubs in that respect. But I still sort of feel confident that Leeds, and Leeds from my perspective, should be up there. And you probably feel the same about Burnley, I imagine. Yeah, I feel the same about both clubs, if I'm being honest with you. And obviously, just just as a side note, you do do uh, some stuff for the club itself, don't you? You do some programme yeah. stuff. Obviously, you reached yeah. out to me this week to do the uh, the programme notes for the Leeds game, the opposition yeah. view, similar to what we're doing here, but in obviously in written format. Um, and I think I did say in that one, I can't remember if I said it in that one or another preview I've done for like a YouTube channel, but I, I, I do think both clubs will be up there uh, come the end of the season. Yeah. I did say, weirdly enough, <clears throat> excuse me, that... When we first got relegated, that it would be Leeds first and us second, and then you started selling all your players, and then we kept hold of some, and I'm like, right, Burnley will win the league, and yeah. then Leeds will finish second. But now I'm not sure. I, th- I think us 
yourselves and Sheffield United will, will, will be in the top three, but I'm not really sure why, uh, in what order at the minute, but be interested to see. I know a lot of Burnley fans don't agree with me on that, and I think the main emotion at the minute is pessimism, or it was last time I spoke, uh, but we've signed some players since then. We'll get into transfers and stuff in a bit, but just going back to the season, uh, what's changed then? Because obviously, I, I know you've referenced the, the, the players coming in. Uh, is that it then? Because... Obviously, he started the season quite poor. I say poorly, like the three-three at home to to Portsmouth, a, a, a team you would have expected to beat. Yeah, it's not a defeat at least, but you know, conceding three at yeah. home to Portsmouth isn't great. So, so what's changed? Is it, is it just the stability that these new lads have brought in? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, Solomon in particular, because he started against Hull City, we immediately saw um, his qualities, and I think it was really important for a lot of the fan base to sort of calm their own scepticism that losing like Somerville and Archie Gray in particular because he was a Leeds lad and then Rutter late on that we'd have somebody who could who could create goals because last season we massively struggled in the central midfield for goals um we saw Kamara in the in the summer he didn't really contribute at all in front of goal last season uh Gruev didn't contribute in, in front of goal apart from the Norwich playoff game so it was really important that the fan base could see the players come in that were, were, were basically going to um, take on the baton that has been left by um, the, the lads who have left. Obviously, they've all they've all got the Premier League. We're still in the Championship, so we do have to be realistic. We can't just go around buying um, sort of Premier League ready footballers. We're, being in the Championship, it's very difficult to do that. So you have to you do have to sign of um, find gems in the rough, and I think. Hopefully, fingers crossed that they've been able to do that. Um, but obviously, we've only it's only been one game, so it's difficult to know for sure. Uh, the Portsmouth game in particular, it was one of those, it was a classic championship game. You know, Portsmouth, Cape Allen Road, newly promoted sides, played with a bit of confidence, didn't have much of the ball, but every time they did get the ball and had a chance at goal, they, they scored every chance they had. Whereas Leeds were very sort of wasteful in front of goal. So it was a classic sort of championship game, which I think, you know, at this level, you get that. Because it's such a yeah. long season, you do get that against such random teams. You'll you'll go on a good run of you know, you're flying up the table, and all of a sudden you'll you'll play like a, a, a sort of mid mid road middle of the road team, and they'll beat you two or three nil, and you'll wonder how that happened. So, for last season for us, the start of the season probably cost us getting on that promotion because we went on a, a crazy run of. I don't think we lost for like 18, 19 games. And if, if we'd have done that right at the start and continued it, we probably would have went up. So it's really important that clubs like Leeds and, and for yourself as well, Joe, that we find consistent uh, results early on and really do a bit like Leicester and Ipswich did right at the start of the season. They looked yeah. uncatchable and it paid off in the, in the, for both clubs because it is a long season and both did, both Leicester and Ipswich did have dips in form. But because they had such good, strong starts to the season, they kind of had money in the bank in terms of having the points there. So yeah. I think it's really important for, for, I think, for Leeds fan base as well, because the goal is obviously promotion that we can um, sort of forget about last season and really focus on the fact that we have won the last two games 2-0 and we can build on it. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there's something in that, because I do think the last couple of times that we've been relegated from the Premier League, it's been because we're constantly playing catch up and the pressure's on you. And obviously it would have been a similar thing for you guys last year with Leicester and it's which running away with it. The pressure was on you. And obviously when the pressure's on you, you're more likely to crack. Um, you've referenced last season as well, and not to go over it too much because I, I, I'm sure it was a painful one. It was yeah. for us as well, mate. Um, but what's different this season? Because you said you're expecting Leeds to be up there come the end of the season. I, I presume, I mean, I'll get some predictions from you later on, but I presume you're predicting yeah. Leeds to go up. What's different this year? I think the difference on paper is, on paper, I don't think the championship, in terms of a sort of top six, even top 10, is as strong as last season. I think last season you had Leicester, Leeds, Southampton, you know, three big, big hitters. You had an Ipswich side that continued their amazing form from getting promotion from League One. And then you had those sort of solid teams who were always in and around the top six, the Norwiches, um, the Middlesbroughs, the teams like that, who the West Broms. I think this mm. season really Leeds and Burnley and Sheffield United, as you mentioned, um, should be going to know what we we should be the top three, so it should be out of us three who sort of competes. I think Luton um, so far have struggled a bit, um, and I think they might 
struggled to readapt to uh, losing Premier League status because obviously it was kind of a first time ever for them. Um, so I think on paper, that's the difference. Uh, I think the difference as well for us is, although we've lost some star players, we've still kept a really good core of core of players, sort of maybe unsung heroes, the Pascal Strikes at the back, the Gruevs in midfield, the Dan James is on, on the wing who, who pitched in with goals and assists last season. And hopefully that core of players now, because they've, they've played with each other for, for the last season, that they can really push on this season. And I think famously when we did, when we went back up under Bielsa, we had felt the heartache of the playoffs the season before. So I'm hoping yeah. sort of lightning strikes twice and we can sort of take the sort of learnings from what happened back then into this season as well. Yeah, you see a lot of teams do that, don't you? Get heartbreak of the of the playoffs or the playoff final in your case and then go on to, to do well. Or you could just do a Huddersfield and slowly fade into League One. Um, but I don't think you will. Um, I do want to ask you about standout players. You've just referenced some players there. I think the player that stands out for me in terms of a player that can hurt Burnley at the minute is Dan James, just with his raw pace. I think him running our fullbacks could be a little bit of a uh, a struggle for us. What, what, what will be your standout player for Leeds? So Dan James is, is definitely up there in terms of um, key players for Saturday. Um, he's raw, like you said, his raw pace... And the way that Fark sometimes plays plays on the counter, he fits that system superbly well. If you look back to the Sheffield Wednesday game a few weeks ago, he scored in that in that game, and it was a counter attack goal. Other players, uh, Willie Nonto, who I think a lot of mm. fans were surprised he, he's still at the club. He recently signed a new contract as well. That's been a major turnaround because he he wanted to actively leave the football club. You know, he's linked with Everton for a, a good season or so. That never materialised. He's still at the club, and he seems to have. Um, he seems to be starting to transition in terms of position. So you started off as a winger, because we've lost our sort of number ten in Rutter. He's he looks like he may be the person who fits in in that position. Um, Matteo Joseph up front as well. Last season he was very much an impact player off the bench. In terms of he would come on for maybe 10, 15 minutes. He's now after a very promising pre-season. He's, he, he looks like he's being given the sort of the the chance to be out 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 and out number nine. Uh, he's he's he currently plays for the Spanish under twenty one setup. He was in the England uh, youth setup, but he's he's picked Spain going forward, I believe. Um, he scored the night against Scotland under twenty ones, and he very much operates sort of. <laughs> He's kind of like a modern striker, but also with classic sort of traits as well. Um, if you see some of his goals, um, his goal against Hull City last last um, last league game was a classic Porter's goal. He scored a classic Porter's goal against Scotland the other night. So he's one of those players who sniffs in and around in and around the box. But you'll yeah. also see him as well. Um, if you were to look back at the second Hull goal, he's actually defending in our box and he starts the counter attack off. Um, so he, and he pitches in with assist. He's pitches in with assist and assist so far this season as well. So he's a very energetic sort of lively player who is. He's kind of like a hybrid between a modern sort of floating rounds, different areas striker, but also has those classic traits of getting in the six yard box and 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 sort of feeding off crosses in the box as well. So I would I would say James Nonto, Joseph. Um, one player to potentially look out for as well is Brendan Aronson, who um, yeah. sort of famously joined a list of players who left the club immediately after relegation from the Premier League, went on loan to uh, Union Berlin in Germany. Uh, I think he sort of saw the dizzy heights of the Champions League because Union Berlin won the Champions League at the time. Um, didn't quite work out from there. He's, and he's come back to Leeds allegedly off his own accord. So he really wants to um, prove himself to Leeds fan base. And he's been... Um, Really getting stuck in the last few games. He's he scored a goal. He's very much a sort of in your face type of player. He he kind of he seems to be in the game. If he starts, him and Nonto seem to switch between central and, and, and wide. So I think Fark is trying to adopt a bit more of a different um style of play this season. He's he, he's kind of kept his core beliefs, but there's a few sort of um tweaks that I've noticed in the in the way he's setting up. So I would say those four players from attacking sense are sort of ones to look out for. Yeah, fair. I think everyone knows how good Dan James and uh, Big Willie are. 
Um, but it's interesting to hear about Aronson and, uh, and Joseph as well. I mean, obviously, I'm aware of Aronson and aware of Joseph, um, but I kind of forgot about the story of Aronson as well. So that's that's interesting. Uh, I know we've kind of skirted over it a little bit, but I do want to go into a little bit more depth about your transfer window. I, I think I think I saw a stat that saw Leeds had, had raised the most money in European football or that fourth. In, I can't remember the exact stat, but you've made a lot of money, put it that way, because obviously a lot of players have left, a lot of good players have left. Yeah. Obviously, Rutter, Archie Gray, Somerville... Sinistera, uh, players like that. But obviously you've brought yeah. in, you've already referenced him, re- referenced him yourself, Solomon from Spurs, and obviously Rodon as well. Uh, and then you've got Jaden Boga, which was a, a weird one. I thought he'd be uh, staying at, at Sheffield United, but you know, you, you've done quite well to be able to entice yeah. him away as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on, 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 on Leeds United's transfer window? I think if I, if, if I look at sort of after the window has happened, if I was to write down on paper... Am I happy with it in 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 respect of the players who have sort of come in and gone? I'd say I'm I'm fairly comfortable with it because I think the players they have brought in are, are going to offer a different sort of dimension. Um, mm. I've only seen Solomon once, but what I saw was very promising. He looks like he's got a lot of quality, quick feet. Obviously, used to playing with with high caliber players, whether that's sort of sporadic appearances for Spurs. He played for Fulham. Um, he actually scored a belting goal against us in the FA Cup a few seasons ago. He likes to cut inside and, and get shots off. So I think he, if he can stay fit, has the potential to be a standout player for us this season. In terms of outgoings, I think Somerville was was one of those where you kind of expecting him to leave. It didn't happen straight away. And I think some of that is sometimes maybe where the player wants to go themselves. Obviously, West Ham came in for him. I think yeah. in terms of the money they got for him, it was it was kind of where I would expect a championship player of his quality to sort of lie in terms of transfer value. I think the one that sort of um, stung the Leeds fans the most was Archie Gray because we only we'd only seen Archie Gray for a season. He's only uh, eighteen. He he's got a huge future potentially ahead of him. So um, Leeds are very much a, a fan base who like to see homegrown, homegrown talent come through and become homegrown heroes. Obviously, that isn't going to happen now because you joined Tom Hotspur. So I think that one stung slightly. I think Rutter was an interesting one because um, he was a standout player for Leeds in the Championship. I'm not entirely convinced he's ready for where he is now in terms of playing for Brighton, who are quite an ambitious team. I think the fact that we got £40 million for him was, on paper, yeah. a lot of money for a player player like him. On his day, he's fantastic to watch. Um, his weaknesses are maybe sort of finishing and consistency in terms of performance. So I get the I get it from a sense of, you know, we brought all this money in and we didn't, we didn't spend all of that money um, on incomings. But I, I sort of approach it with a bit of realism in terms of, well, I knew that would never happen because we come down from we didn't get back to the Premier League. Parachute payments start to dry up. The clubs kind of got this um, at a black hole of kind of hundred million quid that needs to be resolved. Um, it's got ambitions of developing the stadium, which isn't cheap. And I think they've took the approach in the transfer window to try and find the right targets when, when they were available. So £5 million on Jaden Bogle, I think is quite, um, at the, in today's market, is kind of a not a risk-free signing, but it's lower in terms of the risk that's associated with it, especially as he's yeah. he's a right-back. He seems to be quite an attacking right-back, which obviously fits Fark's profile as well. Um, Solomon on loan, very clever business because there's no outlay in terms of um, transfer fee. And realistically, he's a Tottenham Hotspur player. We're a championship club. We can't just be expecting to buy players of his quality. Um, Largi Ramazani, who has come from Almeria, I think we've managed to get him at a decent price um, because they've been relegated from La Liga. Again, um, not guaranteed to be a success, but he looks like a lively player when he came on against Hull. And again, it's a kind of, in terms of risk, risk profile, I think it was close to about ten million pound overall. So again, it's not a huge in the in the modern day market. It's not a huge outlay for a player that potentially could get you back to the Premier League. So I think they've been quite clever in terms of pocketing a decent amount of transfer fee, 
but not going daft in the transfer market and probably going and looking on paper and go, well, really, we should still have a squad that is 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 challenging for the top two anyway. So hopefully it doesn't backfire because they'll be left with egg on the face in terms of could we have spent a bit more money? There was links with Gustavo Hamer at Sheffield United, which I think soured yeah. Chris Wilder's Chris Wilder's thoughts on Leeds a bit. That never came off. You, and you never know who they've actually spoke to in the transfer window either and who who they thought was available and who wasn't. So I think on paper, we, we've still got a, a very good um, squad. Another interesting signing was uh, A.O. or Ao Tanaka from um, Fortuna Dusseldorf, uh, Japanese international midfielder, high energy, good pass with the ball, you know, helps with sort of, from a commercial point of view, helps with sort of global outreach in, in the Asian market and stuff like that. So again, it, I think they've brought in decent quality, but... <sighs> The championship is such a tough league to to navigate. You never know what's going to happen, do you? Yeah, no, I did like the bit earlier on in the answer then when you said like you'd approach it from a realism point of view. I feel like that can resonate with Burnley fans as well. I see Leeds and Burnley's transfer windows very similar, albeit yeah. you've probably done it on a bigger scale. You've sold players for a lot more. Um but, and, and you've made a lot more money. I think you've probably made more transfers. And apologies if that stat is wrong. Um, but I think we're both weaker, but we both still have a decent enough squad yeah. to be able to challenge in this league. And you've got to look at it from that point of view. I think we brought in some good players. Obviously, Hannibal Medre, who you know, obviously at United did quite well at Birmingham when he was in the Championship a few years back. Uh, and I actually thought he played well against us last year for Man United at the turf. Um, and the year before, I remember him standing out a lot in Birmingham's team. They were a poor side back then. Um, well, they still are. Um, but I remember him standing out. Obviously, another player who we brought in, who I want to ask you about, that you'll know quite well, is Jaden Anthony. Now, we obviously brought him in. We've not seen much of him. We, we brought him in, I think, the day before the Blackburn game or two days before the Blackburn game, I think it was actually. And he only had one 45-minute training session, according to Scott Parker. And he actually looked all right in that game, you know, for second half especially, I thought he looked good. He was getting at the Blackburn players and stuff. End product, um, better than some of the Burnley players. Um, but uh, when we signed him, a lot of Leeds fans were commenting out saying, oh, this guy's rubbish. He's not going to do very well there. I I'm, I'm happy that Burnley have signed him. What are your thoughts on him and, and how he did at Leeds last season? My thoughts on him were, to be honest, he... <sighs> it was one of those signings where because there was a lot of quality in his position... He didn't play as much as he as he as he would have liked, and I would have yeah. liked to seen him as well. I think when he did play, we we went through a spell in sort of um, October, November, where we weren't getting many good results away from home. So the few times where he got the chance, he, he was maybe unfortunate because the games didn't go our way. So what was happening was he was starting a few games and then going back back to the bench in in replace of the likes of. James Somerville, Nonto. So he had he had a lot of competition for places in in his position. I think what Fark was doing was he was he was wanting Anthony to sort of originally be a sort of plan B, but hope that he could sort of keep the shirt himself. We did yeah. see glimpses of him. Um, scored some scored a few fantastic goals for the club, and you could see that he was always trying to do the right thing. Um, it's difficult for me to say. I'm not in the camp of he's rubbish because I think it's impossible to say that. You can't. I don't think you can call a player rubbish when when you only you, when that player sometimes is only getting 10, 15 minutes. The big big games where he'd come on and the game was maybe two or three nil. He'd be coming on in games where we were maybe losing two nil. He was coming mm. on games like f maybe five minute cameos and, and and sort of trying to feed off scraps. I think when you when you sort of saw him produce some of the goals he produced. You could see why he'd, he'd been success, successful at Bournemouth. So I think what, mm. I think one thing I would say is when he's at Burnley, you'll want to sort of judge him on a, on a string of sort of a run of games if, 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 if that happens. Um, I think the other side of things as well is um, he came to Leeds on loan from Bournemouth. And I think when you're on loan at a club and you don't play very much, it's very difficult to sort of um, get in the swing of things. And then, and, also during last season, he, he lost his um, his mum as well, which has yeah, obviously has that. a which obviously has a really it can have a really 
bad impact on people. And even even though you're a professional footballer, you're, you're still a human being at the end of the day. So you don't know what impact that had on uh, Anthony in that period of time. Um, but the glimpses I saw of him when he he's one he's one of those players where he will cut inside, get shots off, um, good quick feet. Can tell that he's come from a, a sort of Bournemouth setup where they, they have a certain style of play. Um, can see why, in glimpses again, why Scott Parker sort of liked him. I think he played under Scott Parker at Bournemouth. Yeah, so that's right. There's, a, there's obviously a connection there between Parker and, and Anthony. And, and to be honest with you as well, to say he didn't play much at Leeds, his attitude always appeared to be sort of immaculate. Um, I think some players can come on loan to clubs, you know, when they've been playing down south and they come up north and they go, well, this is this isn't for me. The weather's worse. You know all the all the, all the stupid things that maybe some footballers would would throw their toys out the pram for. He always appeared to have a very positive sort of professional attitude, and I think you could tell he was well liked by a lot of the players. Um, I think it's just a shame that we didn't we didn't see him as much as as we, we I would have liked anyway personally I always like to see new signings sort of get a good run of games I think it was just unfortunate because he was playing in a position where we we were all we were already sort of very well off I think yeah. some of our like some of our best players have, have been wide attacking players um especially last season you know we had the championship player of the season in, in Somerville we had Dan James who probably had the best season he's had at Leeds last season uh, we had Willie Nonto, who was uh, sort of Italian international at the time, very good player as well. So it, it's not easy to, to to compete with those players. You probably Jen Anthony probably needs a club where he's he, he's a regular starter or he's a player who's going to get more minutes. And I, I could imagine under Scott Parker, then he, he that he probably would get more game time than he will at Leeds. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I do think that with them three players ahead of him that you mentioned, it's, it's, it's difficult for him. To, to displace them three. I think he will be our starting or one of our starting wingers, I would imagine it, with Cole Osho on one side, Anthony on the other side. And I think that's a decent pairing in the Championship. But obviously time will tell. Um, let's get into the game then. Injuries and suspensions. Is there any big injuries or suspensions that we need to know about? I did see that Patrick Bamford was coming back, but I don't know if that's a bad thing for you or a good thing. Yeah, Bamford, uh, unfortunately, he, he <laughs> seems to just... He's had such bad luck with injuries. It's it's one of those where yeah. he, got, he gets a string of games and some sometimes things don't go right from front of goal. Other times he goes through a real... He's one of the players who goes through a real hot streak and a cold streak. And his hot streak is... You think, well, this is the Patrick Bamford of sort of old sort of thing. Um, likely it is... If, it, if he is fit, he'll, 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 he'll no doubt start on the bench. I think, again, Fark is one of the managers who... If we're chasing the game with with 20, 25 minutes to go, he does like to bring on f- three or four players at once. And Bamford, I think at the moment, is is kind of he's going to fit that mould of, of somebody who's going to come on for half an hour. Um, yeah. He's getting older. He seems to be getting sort of smaller niggly injuries off the back of sort yeah. of bigger previous injuries. So he, if he is back, I think I wouldn't expect to see him. Uh, other than for the maybe last sort of half an hour, depending on the the, the score at the time, I think yeah, as so well. Not, yeah. The only other the only other injury I can think of off the top of my head is Max Verber, who um, again is in was in a similar situation to Aronson, left the club when the got team got relegated, went went back to Germany. Um, so at the moment, it's kind of in a period of. The fans haven't quite bought back into him yet. He he played in the 3-0 Cup to V against Middlesbrough. Didn't have a great time of it. He's been injured since, so I think he's still injured. So, yeah, I think even if he was fit, he wouldn't have started anyway. So. Fair enough. What, what sort of game are you expecting? Obviously, it's, it's going to be like the, the main game in the Championship at the weekend. It's going to be tough for both teams. I think it's probably going to be our toughest game of the season going away to Ellen Road off the top of my head. I think the only team... Uh, now that I would say will be uh, as difficult to be going to, to Bramall Lane and obviously Burnley don't have great memories there from the last time they're in the Championship but obviously last year in the Prem it was 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 quite fun um, but uh, what sort of game are you expect? I'm hoping for an end to I know it's, it's easy to say this but I, I do have a, a I can back this up but I'm hoping for an end to end game of two real good quality teams and when I, when I look at both teams wingers 
I think they are both wingers that want to get the ball. They want to run at the fullbacks. And I think I'm hoping that both teams do that. And obviously, for my sake, we, we come out on top. Uh, but I've ripped your hand off for a two, you know a high scoring draw, something like yeah. that, a 2 2 right now. What sort yeah. of game are you expecting? I'm expecting a, from our perspective, a tough game. Um, I think on paper, I think Burnley. And Leeds have probably the two the two best overall squads. You can maybe argue Sheffield United have a very very similar in, ter- in terms of talent across the squad, but I think Burnley and Leeds, um, really in my opinion, should be the two teams battling out for the top spot. So I'm expecting a difficult game. Um, I think it's either going to be one of those where it is end to end, it's going to be a high scoring draw. It's going to be two teams who are, who are potentially going to cancel each other out in terms of yeah. It's, is it is it going to be a game where one bit of quality wins it because there's going to be a lot of quality in the pitch? You know, both Burnley Leeds have quality uh, in defence, in midfield, in attack, in goal. So it's kind of like who's going to be who's going to play the better game of chess on the day? I think um, I think it'll be a draw. Personally, uh, I've picked that in the program for Saturday as well. Um, I'm hoping it's a win for Leeds, but I would like, like you said, yeah. I would, I would take an entertaining draw, especially at this at this stage of the season. I think because there's still so many games left, you can, you can't, you can kind of afford to sort of shake each other's hand and say we'll, we'll both take the draw, sort of thing. If it had been later in the season, we needed the three points. I'd be more disappointed if we didn't come away with a win. But I think at the stage of the season, I would, I would take a draw uh, and hope that there's no stupid red cards or bad injuries or stuff like that. Yeah, what 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 score are you thinking then? One, I've I've gone for one one. Um, I think at home we're sometimes guilty of um, in the in the first ten minutes really going going in, going for it in terms of um, getting hold of the game and, and going forward and trying to score early, and then the away team will soak up the pressure and then they'll take one of the first chances they get and then we start chasing the game. Yeah. I think if 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 you Scott Parker, you're probably looking at the Portsmouth game and going, well, Leeds were all over Portsmouth for the first ten minutes. Well, actually went in front, but then conceded very very quickly after, and then we're, we're behind very quickly after that as well. So I think you you probably Parker should really be looking at it and going, you know, maybe some of Leeds' frailties are are conceding sort of soft goals at home and, and not being able to take advantage of of all the possession they have because. Fark is, is is big on sort of, especially at home, keeping possession and, and sort of hitting when the time is right, whereas some away teams have, have found loopholes in that before. So maybe that will play at the Burnley's style of play. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, obviously, the first, the first game for us was away at Luton and we just basically sat back. And then when Luton attacked us, we just countered them. And we we did it so well. Like we were just getting in behind him in like two, three passes, and then we we're playing it out from the back and then breaking the lines. I think that like this game could end up suiting us because you're not going to do what Blackman did and just stick nine men behind the ball and hope for the best. Yeah, the opposite one in the yeah. Yeah. top bins. I think I, we, we struggle to break them down because of that. We do need to learn to be that team that can break teams down if we're obviously we're going to get out of this league. But at the start of the season, we're a brand new team. You can kind of understand that. But whereas Leeds, they're going to try and win the game. They're going to come at us. So I'm hoping that we can exploit that. I'm going to go for 2-2, though. Um, I'm going for a, a good entertaining game, good atmosphere between the two fans. I'm really looking forward to it with a lot of quality on the pitch. One more thing that I do want to get your prediction on before we do wrap it up, mate. I appreciate it. we've just gone past 30 minutes and it is very late. Um, but I did mention earlier that I wanted to get your prediction for the season. Who's your top two, please, and who's going up through the playoffs? I think the top two will be. Uh, I think Leeds will win the league. Touch wood. I think Burnley will take second. Um, I think playoffs. I think it's going to be interesting because I think I think Sunderland have started very well, so it's in, it'll see if they keep that up. Middlesbrough. I know quite a few Middlesbrough fans. They're quite confident of being up there as well. So I think us are the top two. And I think either Middlesbrough or West Brom might take the playoffs. Yeah, West Brom's marched out, I think, for the playoffs at this stage. I, I do I do like the look of West Brom. I've said, like I said at the start of the show, ever since we got relegated, I'm like, it's going to be Burnley, Leeds, Burnley. I stand by that. I don't know which way around, um, but I do think it'll be Burnley and Leeds. And you know what? 
I'll tech it. I'll tech finishing second. If somebody said to me now, you'll yeah, finish definitely. second, but Leeds will win it. I've got nothing against Leeds personally. So I, I, I would take that. Um, but yeah, we'll wrap it up there then, mate. Like I said, I do appreciate you coming on the show. It is late now, obviously. I've had a, a 12-hour shift at work. So if I do look tired, guys, I do apologise. Uh, but massively appreciate you coming on at this time, Tom. Uh, one more thing I do like to ask people to do before I press end stream is let everyone know where they can find you and your content, please, mate. So I'm on uh, Facebook, I'd rather be Leeds, on Twitter, at Radderby underscore Leeds, and my personal profile on Twitter is at tbradley23. Thank you for that, mate. Please make sure, everybody, to go and check out Tom's I'd rather be Leeds. It's been around for a while, like I said, a lot longer than I've actually been doing Turfcast, and I've been doing Turfcast since 2018 now, and you've been doing Radderby Leeds a lot longer than that, mate. But thank you for coming on the show. I do appreciate no it. Problem. Good luck for the rest of the season. But obviously, after Saturday.